Today on the newscast, we take you to the place known as the gateway to hell during the time of Jesus. That's next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. You're probably asking, where on earth are you? That's not the Watchman studio. No, it's not. I'm in a hotel in Memphis, Tennessee, a great town, where I'm giving a speech for a pro-Israel dinner. But in the meantime, I had to come to you this Friday with a very encouraging story in my view. After a week of chaos in Israel, political unrest that we've been covering here on the newscast, we've got a great biblical archaeology history story for you, segment for you, with our good friend, the one and only Danny the Digger Herman. We're going to take you to Caesarea Philippi, a place that during the time of Jesus was known as the gateway to hell. We're going to show you the very place which people during that time thought was a gate to the underworld. And yet, that is where Jesus acknowledged yes to the disciples, I am the Messiah. So we're going to take you there in a minute. Before I do, a quick reminder, Passover is right around the corner. It starts next week, April 5th. And we would love for you to partner with our good friends, Mayor Panim. Now, Mayor Panim uh, is a great Israeli organization on the ground, number one, with incredible soup kitchens at five different locations throughout Israel, feeding the needy, hungry Israelis. Hey, over one million Israeli children right now live in poverty, folks. And during Passover, that's a particularly difficult time to go hungry, and yet... That is the situation. Mayor Panim is stepping into the void, number one, with their incredible soup kitchens, but number two, delivering groceries to needy families who can't get to a Mayor Panim location. So if you would like to help the people of Israel, needy Israelis, for such a time as this, fulfill the biblical mandate to bless Israel working through Mayor Panim, bringing uh, groceries, much needed uh, food at a time like this to the people of Israel, to the needy, including Holocaust survivors, just go to mayorpanim.ericstackelbeck.com. I strongly encourage you to partner with this great organization, especially during Passover. Okay, let's go to Caesarea Philippi, the place once known as the Gate to Hell, with our good friend Danny the Digger Herman and learn what Jesus did at this notorious pagan site. Take a look. Danny, I was almost nervous to come to this place because of its name. This spot was known, at least in ancient times, as the Gate to Hell. <laughs> a bit menacing of a label, but where are we? This is Caesarea Philippi, of course, and this has major significance uh, for followers of Jesus and much more. Tell us a bit about this site. The locals call it Banias, which is the Arabic derivation of Paneon. Originally, this site was founded in the Hellenistic period as a place to worship Pan, the god Pan, that dwells in forests, dwells in caves, and he attacks passengers, and so they get panicked. Seriously, the word panic comes from this. Wow. Okay? But around the time of Jesus, the name of the site was changed to Caesarea Philippi. Philippi, Philippos is the son of Herod. He inherits this part of his father's kingdom. And he wants to show the Caesar, the Caesarean family, just how loyal he is. So he changes it to Caesarea Philippi. Like Caesarea Maritima, this is Caesarea Philippi. So that's how it's named when Jesus comes here. Pan was worshiped here, the Greek god Danny. Also before that, Baal. The infamous pagan deity was also worshipped here? Well, we only have a hint for that in the Old Testament. The book of Joshua tells us that at the foothill of the Hermon was a place for the worship of Baal God. We believe that it may refer to this site, but we don't have historical or archaeological proof. But it was definitely a place of pagan worship, of Pan, and then through archaeology we realize of also other deities. 
the excavations that were carried out right here next to the sacred cave, Eric, uncovered a lot of additional shrines. In fact, look over that niche. Beneath it, there's an inscription in Greek attesting to the worship in the second century, just shortly after the time of Jesus. Pagan worship was going on all along this uh, wall, but the heart was undoubtedly in front of that sacred cave. This sacred cave was mentioned... Sacred to them. Sacred to the pagans. Yeah. And Josephus also tells us that Herod created a temple to Augustus in front of it, whose remains might have been uncovered right here. But this site is soaking with paganism. How did it get the name, the gate to hell? Okay, so this is the story is told in the gospels of Jesus, apparently questioning them. Who do you think I am? What do people say about me? And they provide different answers until Simon tells them, you, you are the son of living God. And Jesus likes this answer so much. Maybe you read his I answer. And while I'm pulling this up, Danny, could you tell the viewers where we are geographically? Number one, we're in the northernmost part of Israel, really. And number two, how old this site is. We are at the northern edge of the state of Israel, right next to Tel Dan. Both of them are like the fingernail of the finger of the Galilee. On your right is Syria, on your left is Lebanon. It doesn't get more north than here. And we're at the foot of mighty Mount Hermon, as you said. Yes, Mount Hermon is uh, today a ski resort. It's also the border, it's heavily guarded. And uh, the name Hermon Haram in Arabic seems to indicate it also had a sense of sanctity and maybe an event called Brit Ben Habetarim, a sacred event relating to Abraham took place on that mount. We did a show, you and I, Danny, from Mount Hermon a while back. I got a lot of feedback from viewers who said you never mentioned the Nephilim. The Nephilim came through Mount Hermon. That's another segment for another time, perhaps. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Danny gave us incredible backdrop there, but if you want right now, grab your phone, grab your Bible, open up to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to 19. You can follow along on the screen with the graphics there. Bear with me. Here we go. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Verse 13, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, where we're standing right now, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, Jesus asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, the gates of hell, will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then Jesus told the disciples, look, don't tell anyone I am the Messiah. And that happened, perhaps, right here in front of what was considered the gates of hell, certainly in this region or thereabouts, Danny. Danny is a man of many talents, including <laughs> reading Biblical Greek. Basic, but I'll do my best. Kata de soi lego oti e petos, kai epo tauti te petra, oiko de meso mu te ecclesian, kai pulai odu u katisosutsin utis. Okay? Petra, petos. What a statement, what a seminal moment in the history of Christianity where it's declared, it's out in the open, the disciples fully recognize who Jesus is here in Caesarea yes. Philippi. The first and the last and the only time this site is mentioned in the Gospels. Yeah, it was a bold act by a very bold man, uh, Jesus, and he came here with the disciples and he laid down the gauntlet in front of one of the most notorious pagan shrines in all of Israel and all of the land. Hey, uh, there was probably all sorts of pagan statues and different we found things them. around here. We found them. Yeah. In this cave, we found one of the richest caves and finds of Roman pagan sculpted material. That's just like Jesus to come to the <laughs> source and to declare, I am the Messiah, I'm the Son of God, this is who I am. And he certainly seemed to be directly challenging the pagan world. Yes. The gates of hell will not prevail against my church. It doesn't get better than saying it here. And you can imagine the whole pagan city, which is now 
buried beneath all this vegetation, you know, centered around such a site, that's quite a bold statement again. And it almost seemed like that declaration by Jesus put wind in, in the disciples' sails and in the sails of his ministry, so to speak, and things only went up from there, up to Jerusalem. Yes. As a matter of fact, but Caesarea Philippi, as you mentioned, Danny, the one time it was mentioned in the New Testament, but what a time. Jesus' words that were spoken, if not right here, certainly in this vicinity, give me boldness and inspiration. The gates of hell will not prevail against my church. So I don't have to worry. I don't have to panic, <laughs> as we said earlier, when evil is at the doorstep, because I have the Lord Jesus living within me. So it's going to be all right, and then some. Danny the Digger, this was more than all right coming here with you. It was another great, great segment. We're just scratching the surface. We've done so many together, and we've just scratched the surface of all there is to see here in the land of Israel, and there's no one better to do it with than Danny <laughs> Thank the you. Digger Herman. My, my pleasure, my honor as you always. Folks, what a privilege to film at Caesarea Philippi with our good friend Danny the Digger Herman, an amazing place. I hope it put a smile on your face. We needed it after a very long and trying week in Israel, in the United States where I live, and really around the world. We live in tumultuous times, but we live in Bible times, and God Almighty is still on the throne, and Caesarea Philippi and beyond always has been, always will be, so be encouraged. Thanks so much for joining us from a hotel conference room here on the Watchman Newscast. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.